her head the, like this. How could she know I was there? Uh, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> shit. Hello guys, back again with me, Putri Gasolina, on the Malam Kliwot Podcast. You definitely know the viral Twitter traits about sacrificial tradition. So this time we have a guest who writes the famous horror trait about a haunted incident at a school located in Sumatra. Let's get to know them more. Hi, I'm Zahwa. Hi, I'm Juni Kreti. Alright, so prepare your earphones and make sure you are alone in the room so you can feel their presence when you're watching this podcast. Let's start! So, it all started with the oddities that happened on Wednesday, mid-July. We both in the same class, third grader. Uh, our classroom is in the fourth floor. It is right in the middle of the hallway. So basically, our class have large window that can literally see everything in the opposite building. We got clear view, nice room, and never we have ever imagined this horrific story would happen to us that day. So every Wednesday is the schedule for us for extracurricular. Yeah, which is the same as the regular. Uh, yeah, we were having badminton class together. It was all fun and tiring. And the class start from 4 to 6 p.m. But every Wednesday, I still had courses after extracurricular. So I often took a shower in the sports building shower room before going home. And she always waits for me in class. And I never took so much to shower. Yeah. Usually there is still a lot of people when I wake Java for her quick shower, but I don't know why there's something different that day. Yes, it was six past ten uh, when I realized that the sports building were empty. No one there. It was really quiet and I don't even heard any cook of sound. At first I didn't find it weird or something. I just quickly back up and went to class to take my bath. And in the class, I saw her sit in the middle of the class, but not in her usual chair. Like, she laid her head on the table like this, and she didn't notice me getting into the class. It was rare, but I thought she was just sleeping. So, so you didn't ask Gertie to come downstairs with you? No, I just, I just pat her shoulder, and I told her that I need to meet with our math teacher. I just went downstairs heading to the teacher's room on the first floor because I had a short appointment with our math teacher. Let's just call her Miss A. And she said she was available after 6, so it wasn't my mistake that I met her that late. But, you know, I started to feel something was off. The hallway was too dark for 6 p.m. It's supposed to be a little bit light because the sun was still there. I felt like the air was a bit sickly. My hand was a bit shaking when I touched the door handle, but before I even pushed it, someone had opened it from the inside. I was freaking out when Miss A just out of nowhere stand there staring at me, no words, no warning, like everything went silent. It was the moment I immediately knew I need to finish this real quick. Then I was about to say something, but she just walked past me, didn't say anything or her face was just pale, her hair in a mess, and she looks like she just had a mental breakdown. I called her name. I tried to chase her, but I didn't even know why I couldn't get her. It was just like she walked in the air. It was so fast, and I felt like I was running up a hill. I'm sorry. But I also don't understand why. I still follow her under the sports building. She went to sports buildings? Yes. And it was crazy that I didn't stop until I finally stand near the washroom. I was like trying to hold myself together, control my breath, but I almost felt like I need to pass out. And it was dark. What? You know, like, or anything? No. It was absolutely dark. It's so dark that it was impossible to look anything without the flashlight. So I opened up my phone, I put on the flashlight, and I pointed out. And guess what I saw? 
I guess it's Miss A. In the middle of the darkness, she stayed there, and the only thing I saw was her back and her head that, like this. Just stand there. <laughs> Boo. I was too stunned to speak. I stared empty at her and I called her name like Miss. But you know, it was the time when I knew something was wrong. I didn't breathe or give any reaction when she suddenly turned her back and you know she do she does a flip like this. <laughs> and then she laughed and stared at me. I have sorry about this, but and the time I caught it again, it was like, it was absolutely crazy. She she laughed yeah. and staring at me. She laughed crazily, and and I was like, I'm freezing in my place. I <coughs> I didn't know why my feet was freezing. I couldn't move any inch. I would just stand and watch all those craziness with my own eyes. But suddenly, Grady came. She stand behind me, took my hand, and somehow she managed to take me out of there. I could feel her hand strongly grabbing mine and we ran so fast that I barely could follow her. I was so freaking pale, I still trying to rethink how all of this could happen but not finish until there. I realized something once we ran through the hallway. It was dark outside. The sky, there wasn't any sun, it was like mind already and that was the time I started to melt down. I sobbed, I cried and I was sobbing because I was way too scared. And in that time I started to run slower and I asked her, how did you know I was scared? I wasn't expected for her to stop running and in the middle of the stairs we were about to head to the first floor. And then when we are both in silence the only thing that hurt was me crying behind. So I was terribly shaking and even more shaking when I realized that something is different. It was the moment where I realized that it wasn't actually her because how could she know I was there? So I was like staying there freezing and I, my question hasn't been answered. It's like she turned her back and she said to me, no, I was like, oh my god, I, I, I didn't remember anything at all after that because I faint and I wake up in the hospital. It's so mind blowing. I can imagine if I were you in this situation. Yeah. <laughs> that's hard. That's hard to okay, realize. I can imagine a story like that that's access. Then you don't remember anything else except you wake up on the hospital. Yes. Okay, okay, that's easy horrified. Now guys, let's hear what happened to Gretty. Where was she when all this happened? Why Gretty disappeared and come out of sudden? Let's check it out. Yeah, we both go to the summer circle liquor and when John would take a quick shower, I used to meet her in our classroom, which is in the fourth floor. But because at that day, I was really tired and I want to go home as soon as possible. So I just ran upstairs and take out all of our things, our stuff, and then went back to support home. But something different that day. Because at first, there's still a lot of people in support home, like five to six people there. But Jawa sees usually take a quick shower about 10 to 15 minutes but i just take back positive side like maybe she's got something to be taking off so i just wait until the next 25 minutes because that's really strange like she take a quick shower for 25 minutes so what is my mind is that maybe there's something accident happened to her Maybe she's fake or anything else. So I just half run towards the bathroom and then when I arrive in the bedroom, I still heard this sound, the sound of the running water come inside the bedroom. So I just knocking and called her name like Jangwa, Jangwa. I called it about five to three times, five to six times, but 
see, I didn't get any answer from her. And then when I opened the door wider, I can't find Jahwa. The bathroom was empty. But not only that, the most scary things is that the floor is dry. Like, the logic here, if you heard the sounds of running water, of course the floor will wet. But that's dry, like there's never been water in it. So at that point, I realized that I was all alone in the sport car. Like, it's a big sport car and then I'm alone. So I was get goosebumps all wait, over wait, my wait. body. But you don't do off running and leaving school and at that time? Yes, I get goosebumps all over my body and then I run to our class because I, after all that strange thing happened to me, I still believe in my mind that Zawa left me and she back to the classroom because that's the place when we're supposed to meet after she take a quick shower, right? Yes. So I run to the class covered in sweat. I open the class, the door, and I also can't find Zawa there. I was freaking out like, where's Jahua that was on my mind? And then suddenly I already remember that Jawa had said to me that he, she had an appointment with our math teacher in his day in the teacher room. So I just go to the stair and went to the teacher's room. But you see this A? No. 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 Okay. Very you will get shot at this part because okay, okay. When I walked towards the stairs, my gaze fell on in the toilet, which is right next to the stairs. The second room, the light is still on. But it's strange for us because at the time it's supposed to be off. Yes, so happy. Yeah, so because I'm really curious at that time, I just go to the toilet. The, the door was open, the door was open, and in the corner of the room, I see our um, clean service. She still put his clothes on, his uniform. The man, like, got a squatting position in the corner, and then she's, he's like reaching something from the trash can. <laughs> he was reaching something from the trash can, and for no reason, suddenly he knew my parents, so he just turned around to look at me, to look at me. And then when he looked at me, he looked to my eyes really deeply, like, like, <laughs> you know? And then he smiled, he gave us a smile, like, oh my god, that's like, at that time, I cannot move my body. and I. I cannot, like, I'm so freaking out, like, yeah. even though I'm freezing, yeah. I'm freezing, and then, that's not the only, yeah, quick things that I got, because at his hand, I see his mouth and his clothes was covering blood, his clothes was covering blood, oh my God. and then, in his hand, I saw a sanitary napkin <laughs> that's still bloody. So, so you know what I think about her? She was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my god. I'm shaking. I'm shaking at the time. It was all ready to tell, it, tell the story to another people, but I'm still shaking. So, but not only that, after I saw that horrible things, and still in position squat, he walked to me slowly. <laughs> like, I was freezing, and he walked to me slowly, and I get like... So at that point, I can move my body, and the only things that I can do is go downstairs to find someone for help. So he's not running out for you? No. Okay. I don't know, maybe she just kiss me or anything. I don't, I don't even care about it because I just go fast as soon as I can to the teacher's room. 
because that's the only place that I can find my body, right? Mm -hmm. So I go to the teacher's room, but Sam asked before I can find anyone. And that point, I really like realizing that it was strange. This was different because this is take about 6 p.m. and then this was Dubai in this school. Like I'm just all alone. I cannot find Miss A, another teacher, even to so I cannot find her. So I just go to the parking lot. I go to the parking lot and then because I was really shocked, I was really scared. I don't know why, but I just think. I think in the parking lot. I think and then I wake up. But I'm not really waking because I'm still dreaming. So I wake in my dream. I wake in a place like an open space, outdoor space, in a like not forest, in the garden. And then someone came to me. He introduced her, himself and then he said that his was my family guardians. Mm -hmm. So I I remember that my father, my great grandfather had told me that our family is special, but he never told me that we have a guardians. So this guardians is the one who protected us. Yes. The guardian is the one who protected us. If not because of him, I don't know, maybe we already <laughs> died. We cannot be here to tell our story. So he said to me that there was something different so you can get through all these things because there's someone in our school he was made a promise with evil with Yes, he made Sugihan and then he go from our school like he not working here. Yes. yes. Our He had gone for a few months. Yeah. But the relationship still working, so it took some victim every once in three years. Three. Once in three years, Bruce must want people to be sacrificed. On the day they want yeah. to be a victim. Yes. yes. We are being sacrificed. I mean, uh, they want to get sacrificed at <coughs> six six around six PM because that's what they told me about six PM and then once in three years in the middle of July. So the guardian told me about that. I was freaking out like, I didn't believe it. Like, you will not believe it if someone's come to your dream and tell it. Like, how can that be possible? Because at first, I didn't believe about these things. Like, I don't believe about someone. Yes. If I don't know, it, like, I don't believe I have a guardian because, you know, I'm a, like, it's, this never happened before. Yeah. So at that time, he told me all, and then he just so you will not believe that there's someone make like, come to, come to your dreams like that. I grabbed my hands, and then she grabbed my hands like he said. After all the things that he said to me about what happened to us, he said, "Not nah, go back to your home, your mother." And Father, I'm waiting for you. He was in deeply sadness. So after he told me like that, he just like punched my face. I don't know what, but he just like gave me like, a pat in the head. Okay. A pat, but uh -huh. it's a little bit hard. Not only pat like this, but mm -hmm. and at that time I was wake up. We don't wake up. We wake up and then I found myself in hospital next to Jaffa. Yes, and that's the time when we knew that, in fact, we have lost for three days. Yeah. We've been lost for three days, and the security found us in this works building. So, that's all. Yeah. But the strange thing here is, like, it's a sport building, and 
And every day there were crammed there. They were coming by, but no one saw us there for two days. And for the third day, they found us. So you disappeared for two days. Two days. Two days. Two days. Two days. Two days. Guys, it's so scary. You can see the hairs on the back of my neck are now freaking now. <sighs> okay guys, that's a very scary episode and full of more place. Thank you to Zahua and Gretty for being able to tell your story on the Malam Kriwons podcast. Hopefully this incident will not happen again, rather than persegihan and sacrifice people for well. It's better to if we learn Satu dari rather than yang satu keluarga. Rather than pesugihan and sacrifice people for well, it's better if you learn to manage business and promotions. Remember, guys, stay away from black magic because the law of karma exists. Thank you and see you in the next episode with another horror story on the Malam Kriwons Podcast. Bye-bye! Bye! -bye. Bye.